Hey guys. So the other day, a friend of mine who I made up just now asked me, Hey, Carrie West, and welcome back to my photography channel. Have you ever thought about using Adobe Super Resolution for macro photography? And I thought that was interesting. I thought, why would you use Super Resolution for macro photography? And I think the answer is in a situation like this, where say you want to photograph this fly, but you're too scared to get close to it, and I can understand that. I mean, wildlife photographers get all this praise for getting within 50 feet of a grizzly bear as if a bear has ever hurt a human being. Why don't you try getting face to lens with a giant bloodthirsty butterfly and tell me who's shitting whose pants then? Yeah, that's what I thought. So anyway, I think this can be really useful for stuff like this because you can't always get super close to bugs or say your lens isn't super high magnification or something. Like in this situation right here, there was all these leaves in the foreground here and if I pushed through the leaves it might have shake, shaken the whole plant and scared them away and this was probably the closest I could get without scaring away this magnificently glorious uh, fly here. So I mean I miss focus on this and honestly I think that's probably rule number one when it comes to macro photography is make sure that you nail focus because it really doesn't matter how high your resolution is if you know if you don't nail focus the image is gonna be soft either way. But I thought we'd put this through there is a focal point here and you can you can see zooming in on this 24 megapixel image we're seeing a lot of pixels here so we'll throw this one through super resolution just see how it looks I'll, I'll run an export on both and we'll compare them in Premiere and uh and then for this one, I actually did nail focus and I did get close. And I think this is where I would probably use it more often than not, is to just eke out even more sharpness out of an already uh, technically nailed photo. And uh, I think this is a good example too, because I'm not so close that he takes up the whole frame, but I'm close enough to where you can see the details. So what I'll do is I'll throw this one through super resolution and then we'll crop in and we can adjust the angle and stuff and really get the perfect composition. And then I think we're gonna throw this one into Photoshop and just finish the edit off. That way I can just kind of, you know, lump this into uh, an editing video as well. And I can just show you guys what I do with macro images and we can have a nice little finished product. So hopefully this won't take too long, but um, yeah, so let's go ahead and start off with this one. They implemented this into Lightroom. I'm a little bit late on this, but I uh, haven't really had much reason to use it until uh, the bugs started coming back out this summer because I really don't crop my street images that much and that heavily to where this would really come in handy. But for macro, I mean, just like wildlife photography, sometimes you just can't get close. And uh, with a low megapixel sensor like the Sony a7 III, there's really not that much room to play with it. So this could effectively double your resolution and give you more photos to work with because, yeah, you just can't always get that close. So let's run this one through it. And you know, when I'm sneaking up on a bug like this, I'll, I'll usually start pretty far off and just start taking images, slowly getting closer. So even if you do scare the bug off, you might have some somewhat usable images, even if you can't get as close as you want. So it, it puts enhanced in the name and it creates a copy and they look identical, obviously. But I'll go ahead and export both of these and, uh, and we'll punch in and, and really see. I, I mean, I can definitely tell zooming in that there's quite a bit more resolution here to play with and it, it does introduce some artifacting but I mean you shouldn't be cropping this tight but just having a little more resolution to play with and increased sharpness upon that resolution can can really come in handy I think so so let's jump over to this one and we'll enhance this one as well all right so we've got this enhanced version here I'm gonna throw this one into Photoshop and we'll see uh, just how sharp we can make this I'm gonna apply even more sharpening on top after I do some other uh, tweaks to this image so we have all this resolution, so I'm going to start by cropping. I'm going to keep my original ratio here. We're going to angle it, and we're going to bring it in even closer. Careful not to cut off his antennae here. I don't mind cutting off his feet because they're wildly out of focus anyway. The main focus is going to be his head. Here we go. So I cropped in pretty heavily on this, and we still have a veritable shitload of resolution to play with here, which is really sweet. After cropping, I'm gonna start with just some basic exposure adjustments, if they're even needed. It looks pretty well exposed. The histogram would say that it's underexposed, but that's probably accounting for a lot of this black background here. So bring that up just a little. Bring these highlights back down to where they need to be. Looks a little better. Let's throw some contrast in there. Looks pretty good. Contrast always increases vibrancy too, so 
you gotta be careful with that, especially when it comes to these bright neon colors here. So we're gonna do a quick dodge and burn on this. I'm not gonna go crazy with this, but we'll just sort of emphasize some of these brighter areas just a little bit more. To be honest though, I really could go crazy with this because uh, with macro images, it's I feel like there's a little more creative liberty you can take as opposed to like portraits or something because you know, you don't see this with your eyes. So it's, it's easy to trick the brain into thinking that it's realistic even if you did heavy, heavy work in post because this is only really visible with a camera anyway so you know you're used to seeing people's faces all the time so when you go really crazy dodging and burning somebody's face it just doesn't look natural but i mean we never see wasps this close up and if you do see them this close up all the time then you're probably gonna die soon from getting millions of stings from a asshole wasp and i don't want to generalize you know it's like Wasps are assholes, but this one was pretty cool. You know, it's it's important not to generalize these groups of living things. You don't want to offend any any arthropods out there. I think that's important. It is 2021 after all. Increasing brightness never really means anything unless you also adjust the darks around it. That way you have nice contrast going on. And again, I'm not going crazy on this. I'm just going to kind of do some minor things. This is usually what I would do. Sometimes I go heavier, but with this guy, he's so shiny. You don't really want to increase these whites too much. Otherwise, it just makes it look even shinier, which can be an issue. I didn't really do too much, really don't need to. But I'm gonna go ahead and give a, a pseudo vignette here through dodging and burning to kind of pull your eye into his face even more. Try to limit some of these highlights on the, uh, on the boundaries here. There's no point in having them this bright. And then just a nice little increase of exposure right around the middle. And already that's really making his face pop. So I think that's about all we're gonna do as far as dodging and burning. It really doesn't take much. We'll go back into camera raw and play with colors just a little bit. A little more contrast. We'll push these greens over to blue just a little bit. So the warmest tones are his body. Really being careful with the luminance here, because if you look right down where these oranges and yellows meet the greens, it's already starting to show some banding. It's not the biggest deal in the world. We're probably gonna darken a lot of that down anyway, but it's just important to be careful about stuff like that. Bring these oranges back over to yellow just a tiny bit too. Yeah, that's not perfect, but that's not really the focal point anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. I think that works pretty well. Good enough. And already this is looking pretty good, and we just have so much detail here. One thing I am gonna actually do real quick is uh, try to get rid of some of this chromatic aberration on these little highlights on his hairs there we go that got rid of some of that colory bullshit in there that looks a lot better duplicate this one and I'm gonna do just a light further sharpening of this image not that it really needs it but I just like to see how high we can take it here. So we'll go down to 50% on this. Control I to invert the layer mask. And then I'm just gonna paint in right where the areas of focus are. Sharpening out of focus areas looks like dog pubes every single time. So 
I like to just do it this way just to make sure that I'm only sharpening the areas I want sharp. Crank this back up to 100. And then overlay. And that might have even gone a little bit too far, so I'm actually going to probably take this down to about 70%. That should. That looks pretty good. I generally do this because of a lack of resolution, but I mean, we're playing with a lot here, so it's probably not completely necessary. But I'm going to do it anyway, because why the hell not? I'll throw it back into Camera Raw one more time. And like I said, I'm going to do a bit of a radio filter inverted. And I'm going to darken down the background even more. A bit less of a feather on this. really gonna emphasize his face and try not to push it too far here that looks pretty good really moody you know I like those moody edits let's see if this will make any sort of difference Making a nice soft light source coming in from the top here with this with this D haze radio filter. But taking it really easy because I do still want a nice moody edit here. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go through and remove some of these little black spots because why the hell not? He was a dirty, dirty boy. Dirty boy. He was. Mm, yes. Mm, yes. <laughs> I promise I don't have brain damage. Not yet. What's your problem, little pug? I like these really clean, clean macro images here. I know it's not real, but I don't care. I'm not adding any insects. I'm just manipulating the ones we have and. And you know, what is life if not manipulating people around you? I'm just kidding, I'm not, I'm not a sociopath. Brain damage or no, I'm not a sociopath. I don't think we've really had to contend with too many sensor or lens dust. There's definitely some in here. But most of the background is, is kind of busy, so it doesn't really show up. It's really only in those big gradients that you have to worry about that. I think that's pretty good. We'll try this, we'll see how it works. Because I love this effect. It's probably overused, but I'm not sure how much it's really used in macro, to be honest. It's the Orton effect, and we'll just see, uh, might as well try it out, you know? I don't think it's gonna hurt anybody. It's not gonna save any lives. As far as I know. I mean, I'm not a... I'm not a space psychiatrist or anything, but... Let's just see how it looks. I think that looks pretty good. So let's pop this back over into Lightroom and we'll talk. We'll have a nice little conversation here. So yeah, I think that the results are, are pretty awesome. Um, I remember when Super Resolution first came out, or at least the enhanced version in Lightroom, it didn't really do much, and I think it was mostly created for X-Trans sensors on Fuji systems because they have a different, basically a different RGB format on their sensors, and sometimes that caused issues with an Adobe product, so they kind of made that to make sure that Fuji users were able to edit their images the same way that everybody else does with their Bayer sensors. But now that Topaz with their Gigapixel and uh, Luminar AI is doing all this crazy stuff with artificial intelligence, Adobe is finally sort of uh, catching up to all that. And uh, I think they did a really good job. You know, this is something that I could really see myself using. At first, it kind of felt like a gimmick, but now that they've, I don't know if they changed it at all, but now that it's in Lightroom, it seems to do a much better job and it, it, uh, it doesn't cause a bunch of weird artifacting. You know, the first time I used Topaz, I used it for a denoise, but it really messed up my images and I ended up just canceling my uh, subscription or whatever I had to it. Um, it just didn't work for me, and I'm not sure how Gigapixel and all that works. Maybe it works better, but this works plenty 
well enough for me. Yeah, I'm just really glad that Adobe started doing this. You know, I'm, I'm glad I'm a customer and it, you know, their, their monthly thing kind of sucks, but um, at the same time, it's like I have full Photoshop and full Lightroom for like 20 bucks a month. Uh, whereas with other companies, you might end up paying like 500 bucks and then in a couple of years you got to update it again, where this way I get constant updates the day that they're released, which is really sweet to me. Um, in the long run, you probably pay more, but you know, you get what you pay for, I think. And there's a reason that Photoshop has been around for a long time. They, they know what the hell they're doing. So I'm, I'm happy with this. And yeah, I think this is something that I could really end up using. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I think I'm going to try to do like an in the field macro video. I just got to figure out how I'm going to do it and make it interesting to watch. I don't know if the answer is POV or if I should just set up a second camera with a tripod and a microphone and all that and just sort of talk about what I'm doing. If that's something you guys are interested in, let me know. Um, if not, uh, go f yourself. I'm probably going to do it anyway because it sounds like fun. Yeah, that, I think that's about it. This seemed to work really well. So please uh, subscribe and like and you know all that dumb shit that everybody asks you to do. I, I really appreciate it. This channel's still really small, but it's honestly growing a bit faster than I thought it would. So that's cool. It's definitely pushing me to keep going here and, and keep making these videos because it's a lot of fun. So uh, I appreciate it, you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.